Hi, I'm here with some more questions on quantum physics. These are questions on matter waves. Let's get started with the first question. At what speed would people, each of mass 60 kilograms, passing through a door of width 1 meter, diffract? Comment on the value of this speed. OK, so we're going to be treating the people as uh, a particle that will have an associated de Broglie wavelength. And we're going to see uh, how fast they need to be moving to diffract through this door of one meter. So what we need to do first is state the conditions for observable diffraction. All right, so if you remember, for observable diffraction, we need the wavelength to be approximately equal to the size of the gap. OK, so that's our first point that we'd want to make in this question. Right, so now we know what the wavelength is, and this, as I said, this would be a de Broglie wavelength since it's associated with a particle. What we want to do is we want to rearrange this equation and make v the subject so that we know how fast the people need to be going. So let's do that. v would equal h over m lambda. Let's just substitute the values in and see what we get. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. That's Planck's constant. The mass of each person is 60. And the wavelength is 1, because we were given the wavelength. It's the width of the gap. Now, when we substitute the values in and calculate that value, we will get 1.105 times 10 to the minus 35 meters per second. Well, so the 2SF value is 1.1, so you just say that. So 1.1 times 10 to the minus 35 okay, meters per second. All right, that's the speed. So that's the second mark there, doing that calculation. It's fairly straightforward. The third point we'd want to make, comment on the value of this speed. Well, the velocity is so small it's negligible. That's the key idea here. They're basically stationary, aren't they? Anything moving at 1.1 times 10 to the minus 35 meters per second is not going anywhere. And it's sometimes helpful to have some reference values in your mind. So the diameter of an atom is about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So you're going a, an incredibly tiny fraction of an atom per second at 1.1 times 10 to minus 35 meters per second. Even a proton is, so if I write that, d proton is about 10 to the minus 15 meters. So you're even a tiny, tiny fraction of a proton per second. So this is so small, so slow that it's negligible. You're stationary, so you can't have people diffracting through a doorway. It's not possible. Right, let's move on to the next question. Electrons in outer space can travel at very high speeds. One particular electron has kinetic energy of 0 0.010 mega electron volts. We've got three parts to this question. Part A, determine the kinetic energy in joules. Part B, determine the de Broglie wavelength of the electron. And then part C, state and explain whether a proton moving at the same speed as an electron would have a smaller, the same, or a larger wavelength than the one calculated in B. OK, so A requires us to convert from mega electron volts to joules. So the kinetic energy is 0 0.010 times 10 to the 6, because it's in mega electron volts, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's our conversion for the electron volts to joules aspect. So that's for the mega. This is for the EV part. You can, of course, combine those. That's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 if you were to do it all together. 
Okay, so you might want to, want to if you're good at remembering conversion values, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 for mega electron volts. So when we do that, we're going to get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15, and that's in joules. Okay, so that's our kinetic energy done. Determine the de Broglie wavelength of this electron. So the, the obvious way to do this is work out the speed that corresponds with the kinetic energy we've worked out, and then put that into the de Broglie wavelength equation. I'm going to do it a different way, just to be different. And it might be useful to do this in situations involving de Broglie wavelength and other questions as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what's the relationship between momentum, which is equal to mv, and kinetic energy. You might have actually done a question like that before. So when you combine these equations, we find that the relationship between kinetic energy and momentum, well that's 2m, sorry, on the bottom there, is kinetic energy is momentum squared divided by 2m. Okay, and that means that momentum is equal to 2m times the kinetic energy all square rooted. So we could actually use that and substitute for that expression into the de Broglie wavelength equation. Right, we want to work out the de Broglie wavelength, so h over mv, right? So we're going to substitute in what we just convert what we just worked out there. So now we have the de Broglie wavelength based on the kinetic energy, so we can use that. Okay, now let's substitute our values in. So we've got 6.63 times 10 to minus 34. And then square root of 2 times the mass. We're dealing with electrons. That's on the formula sheet, so times 10 to the minus 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. The kinetic energy is what we just calculated, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15. And don't forget to square root the lot. Okay. So if we do this, uh, you can see I did a stage of algebra, but now our calculation is just taking place on one line. That's 1.226 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, or 1.2 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, if we put it in 2SF. So that's part B. Let's do part C. Part C, stay and explain whether a proton moving at the same speed as an electron would have a smaller, the same, or larger wavelength. Okay, let's have a look at the equation. Lambda equals h over mv. The thing that is different between our proton and electron is their mass. So mass of a proton is larger than the mass of an electron. And we can see that the de Broglie wavelength and the mass are inversely proportional. Okay, So lambda is proportional to 1 over m. Therefore, the wavelength of protons would be less than the wavelength of electrons if they're moving at the same speed. Okay, so we can write proton has a smaller wavelength than an electron. Okay. We, and it should be clear, you know, we've compared the masses. It's quite obvious that that's mass there. We've deduced, having stated this relationship, that the wavelength is there. So it should be clear from there that we knew what we were doing. The proton has a smaller wavelength. So there we go. That's our first two questions on matter waves there. And I'll be doing another video with a couple more questions.